The Rodecaster Pro 2 is probably one of the most powerful audio mixers you can buy. It just does everything. And it does everything really well, which makes me both excited and a little bit scared to talk about this device today. If I were to cover everything, this would be a three hour video. So we're not gonna do that. I've done myself and you all a favor and condensed everything in this machine down to the bare necessities. Everything you need from the moment you turn it on until the moment you push go live. What's all the stuff in between? That's what we're gonna talk about today. I'll walk you through the entire setup. And if you want a deeper dive, if you want me to make a, it's not gonna be three hours. If you want me to make a bigger video, let me know in the comments down below, but we should probably get started. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I'm not shooting this video on my typical, relatively expensive camera setup. I'm actually shooting this on a $150 webcam, the Insta360 Link 2C. So uh, more on that later. Let's jump into the Rodecaster Pro. First things first. I'm a there are two models of the Rodecaster. There's the Rodecaster Pro 2 and there's the Rodecaster Duo. There are very few differences between these two. A lot of people think one's more powerful than the other, but that's not true. They are essentially the exact same machine One's just bigger and has more inputs and outputs. The Rodecaster Pro 2, the one that I have next to me, has four microphone inputs and four headphone outputs. The Rodecaster Duo only has two of each. Also, the Pro 2 has six faders and eight smart pads, while the Duo only has four faders and six smart pads. Just a little downsizing. Other than that, all the internals are exactly the same, the exact same processor, the exact same interface, the exact same preamps, so you get the exact same audio quality. There is actually one thing that the Duo has that the Pro doesn't, and that is a headphone jack on the front, making it not only a cheaper, smaller option that fits on your desk better, but just a more convenient option for gamers and streamers, singular, singular content creators. But just know if you don't need more than two inputs or more than four faders, you're not sacrificing any kind of quality going with the Duo. Well, let's move the mic over here. Let's talk about setting up a mic on this device. You can see I've got my microphone plugged into input one at the back here, and when I talk, it shows microphone one giving a signal. You can see there's a little purple line at the bottom underneath my mic one, and there's a purple dot above the first fader, showing this is the fader for microphone one. And if I press that top button, it'll take me right to the microphone setup. Now we're already getting into cool territory with the Rodecaster, because this is where things already get easier than other interfaces. Normally you'd go through here and you'd set up your gain manually and set up your EQ and your compression manually, but the Rodecaster comes with these nice little presets here. Lots of preset microphones, look at that. And I'm using an SM7B and look, they've got an SM7B right in here. So that's what I did. That's how I set up my microphone. They got a lot of popular mics in here, especially broadcast and podcasting microphones. They got the Procaster here, they got the pod mic. They've also got generic condenser and dynamic mics. But I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Uh, the Rodecaster Pro doesn't know what mic you have plugged into here. So if you have a different microphone that's not in the presets, you can still try out the presets and it's gonna be okay. Excuse my voice, by the way, I'm, I'm getting over something. In fact, that's probably what I recommend any of you do that are using this for the first time. Don't try to go in here and adjust all the little parametric EQ stuff. Oh, there's a lot. And they're very, they're very studio-esque. They're not like consumer plugins the way Elgato stuff works. They're very, they're very prosumer. So rather than coming in here and trying to tweak stuff for your microphone, check out some of these presets here. Tap on all of them. You might have to make some tweaks. For example, if you're using a condenser mic and you tap on a dynamic mic, you'll have to turn on the phantom power and turn down the gain quite a bit. But that's what you should do first. I've seen situations where condenser mics sounded amazing using the SM7B preset. And maybe you'll find something close and wanna go in and tweak it a little bit. Maybe adjust the compressor or the EQ a little bit. And once you get it set to exactly where you want it, just go back and hit this presets button and you can actually save your current preset, name it, Cool Vox. And you now have a custom preset that you can use whenever you want. But let's take a listen to what this has actually done to my voice. If I turn off the processing, you can hear what this sounds raw going directly in with no effects on it. And if I tap this, it brings the preset back onto my microphone. What do you think? How's the SM7B preset on here? That's all I did. I'm not even touching anything in post. But real quick, I'd actually like to tell you more about this camera that we're shooting this entire video on. This is the Insta360 Link 2C, and it's a $150 webcam, and it looks like this. And by the way, this is the way it looks out of the box. All the settings are on auto right now. You plug it in, 
This is how it looks. And one of the reasons this camera looks so good is because of the large half inch sensor built into it that allows you to shoot in up to either 4K 30 or 1080 60. Just for fun, let's do a side by side between this webcam and the laptop webcam I've got over here. And for even more fun, let's jump to a low light side by side. The typical camera setup that I shoot these videos on goes for about four grand. So for this being about I want to say like 4% of the price. It's probably one of the most cost effective ways that you can get started making a high quality live stream or YouTube videos. But if you're bummed that you're missing out on the background blur from a camera like this, you should know it's also got some of the best bokeh simulation or simulation of any camera I've seen. Especially if you stay reasonable and keep the setting down to like 7% where it should be. Don't crank it up to 100. No camera looks like that. But if you pair this background blur with proper lighting, you can get remarkably close to a setup that looks like a mirrorless camera. It's also got a couple really cool features like AI framing, which you can initiate initiate by putting your hand up to the camera and then it will zoom in on you and follow you around wherever you move your head so you're always in the center of the frame. It's got a vertical mode for easy short form content and you can customize hotkey presets so if you want to zoom in real fast for the memes on stream. It's easy to do. So while the Link 2 is the most affordable way to get started with Insta360's image quality, they also have the Link 2, which is $200, but they use the exact same image quality, the same camera, but the Link 2 has that motorized gimbal built into it. Plus right now, if you use the Amazon link in the description below, you'll get $24 off of this webcam. It's for their summer sale. It lasts until June 8th. So if you're watching this before June 8th, click the link down below. And let's get back to the Roadcaster. But we don't just have regular plugins like EQ and compression. We also have this other tab called Effects where we have an echo, an echo which, echo, I, which I, can't I, hear, I can't hear, but I'm guessing, but I'm guessing you can hear. Or we got some reverb where I can tap on any of these dials and use this smart dial to adjust it. We can go to a small room, we can go to a large room, we can turn up the reverb, or we can turn it back off. You may have even noticed this button here that says more effects on smart pads, which we will get to the smart pads in a little bit. Now, the Rodecaster Pro has a ton of effects that you can put on there. Feel free to mess around with them. I'm not gonna go over these because Again, that would be the three hour video. Just make sure that when you adjust the level, the gain of your microphone, that you want your voice to be right in the middle of this little, this little green line right there. That's what we're aiming for. But let's move on to the next section. Let's talk about the faders right here. Mixing on this device is incredibly powerful and it can get really complicated, but Rode added a new update a couple months ago that makes this work a lot like normal gaming mixers, a lot like the Go XLR. You do have to make sure your device is updated and you have to activate it on the device. I've got a video that shows you how to do that. I will link to it down below. But if we go back to our home screen here, we can see all our different channels. You can see we've got our four microphone inputs on our first four faders, but I'm only using one microphone input. That seems like a waste of faders to me. I want this to be my game volume. So I tap on the button right here. I hit the little settings icon. And right now you can see it's selected to mic input two, but I'm gonna go down here to my virtual inputs and outputs, and I'm gonna change it to the little game icon and then hit the check mark in the top right. Hit the home button. And now if I go into the Windows settings and set my game output to be Roadcaster Pro game, this will now control my game volume. You can actually see I set the fifth fader over here to be my music volume. So this will control Spotify as well. These faders are super customizable. And I know you guys are used to gaming interfaces where you can assign different channels to different faders, but this takes it one step further. For example, at my setup, I've got a guitar rig that has a stereo output and I'll plug that left and right stereo output into microphone inputs three and four. Now I could control those separately with faders three and four, but that seems like a waste of a fader if it's both my guitar. So if I go in here and I hit the settings, I can hit the stereo button between input three and four and turn that into a single stereo channel. Let's reassign it and we go home. And now you can see that fader three is actually controlling inputs three and four as a stereo channel. And if for some reason, six faders are not enough for you, or you got the duo and you wish you had more than four faders, there's a button in this bottom left that lets you assign all the faders at a glance. You can see you got the six physical faders. These are the six here. And there are three virtual faders down here. Well, what do those do? Let's set uh, input two to one of them just for fun. You can see there's no dot next to it, so you know it's not assigned. And then let's assign this one to, I don't know, let's make it one of these outputs, uh, USB output. You can, you can see between the sixth and seventh channel, there's a thicker line saying these are physical faders, these are virtual faders. And if I tap on the microphone here, I can now adjust the volume from this smart knob here. Same thing with this next one. So even though they're not assigned to physical faders, I can still control the volume of these three more virtual channels with this dial right here. This is great for channels that you'd like control over, but you don't 
mess around with often. Maybe like a fade in or a fade out for an intro track that you only need to do once and you don't want to dedicate a whole fader to it. But if we're setting this up for gaming, let me make some adjustments here and turn this into a good gaming mixer. Let's set this second one to be the chat. I actually said that was an output. That's that's definitely an input. Let's change this one from game to our standard USB, like our system input. You can also see there's channel A and B here. Those are just two more virtual outputs from your PC. If you have other things that you want to make separate channels. They just, they're just not named. So they named them A and B. You can do whatever you want with them. Let's make this one music. We'll make this next one A. We'll make this fifth fader the audio coming from our second PC, which we'll get into two PC in just a second. And we'll make this last one our smart pads, which we will get into in a second. You know what? No, let's get into smart pads now. These smart pads are really cool. And not only are there eight of them, but I want to say there are eight. I've got it set to four different pages, which is 16 different buttons. But when I add an effect to page four, you can see it gives me a page five. I'm pretty sure you can get up to eight pages on this. That is 32 different smart pads. Now, one thing you can do with these smart pads is you can set sound samples to it. So let's go to edit here. Now you can just hit record and record something from your voice right into it. Now, I just realized I don't think you heard that. Should we take a little detour and look at why? Let's take a little detour real quick. Let's go into the settings here. Let's go into outputs. Go to routing, and we're going to go to USB 1 chat, which is what's going into my PC right now. And you can see the smart pads are not coming through. We're getting a little bit detailed here. We're not going to go into this. But I made this output a custom mix, and I choose which channels are actually going into it. Right here, I turned on the samples. So now, hit record and record something from your voice right into it. I think you heard that. I'm pretty sure I saw the meter in OBS go up and down. But that recording was probably a little bit quiet because the sixth fader that we set to the sample pads is all the way down here. Hit record and record something from your voice right into it. So you can control the volume of all of your sample pads by using the fader that you assigned to it, which is great for things like intro music or outro music or maybe music that you want to play during an intense moment. You want it to fade in or fade out. You can do that by yourself. Another thing we can do with these sample pads is the thing I mentioned earlier with these voice effects. So, of course, we have the reverb and we have the echo like we had before, but we also have a foghorn megaphone, a megaphone effect. Honestly, this is probably my favorite one. We've also got... Robot effects. Effects with multiple robots. Get this robot. Or this robot. Or this robot. And we've got a voice changer. Which sounds like this. And you can see at the top there's an option for latching. Now latching is like the audio term for toggle. So you can see when latching is on. If I tap it, it turns on the voice effect. If I tap it again, it turns it off. But if we turn off latching. I hold it to turn on the voice effect. I let go to turn it off. And lastly, we have a pitch shifter. And this is gonna pitch our shift. And then back. back up. Wherever we want. Mess around with some of the things you can do with these smart pads. You've got a couple other sections here I didn't talk about, like the mixer settings with censorships and fade in and outs. A lot of really powerful stuff inside these smart pads here. The last thing I really want to mention here is the dual USB on the back, and that is a great way to set up a dual PC setup. It's not quite as powerful as Beacon's dual USB setup, so if that's really what you want, like a robust dual USB audio interface, go check out the video we posted earlier this week. I will link to that down below as well. But but you do have a fairly robust dual USB setup here where the first one that would go into your primary PC, probably your gaming PC, has two different audio channels. One is your entire mix that would be going into OBS. You'd grab that for your stream. The other one is the chat mix that would only have your microphone and you'd send that to Discord. The second USB output only has one output. So again, if you have a dual PC setup, that one would go to your streaming PC. Or if you're on a single PC setup and you want an extra track for like a Twitch VOD track that doesn't have music in it, you can plug it into the same PC and you can get all three of those tracks going to your first PC. Again, there are no rules for this stuff. The roadcaster doesn't know what you're doing. Use it how you need to use it. And I wish I could go over everything on this machine. There are even a couple other little features I want to tell you about right now. Like, did you know you can use wireless mics directly connected to this? The Rode, what is it called? The Wireless Pro 2 or something? And I think the what the Wireless Me? I don't remember their official names, but the two latest versions of their wireless mics will connect directly to this. And you may have noticed that in the microphone setup earlier, where there was a wireless option right there as a preset. If you're really big on controlling things with MIDI, you can set these smart pads to be MIDI controllers. If you want to record your VODs but have all the audio tracks separately, you can actually go into the output settings and record a multi-track session where it grabs all your different channels separately and records them to a micro SD or I'm pretty sure 
an SSD plugged into the second USB slot. I haven't tried that, so I don't remember, but that's what this record button is for. Now, I would love to go over how to set up sub mixes and also how to properly EQ your voice, but that would make this video very long. And I also went over them deeply in recent videos on other audio devices. I went over sub mixes on the Elgato Stream Deck Plus video that we posted a couple weeks ago. And then I pretty heavily went over vocal effects like EQ and compression in the Beacon video we posted earlier this week. So again, links to both of those below if you want some cleanup, some extra help with those specific subjects. I'm trying not to repeat myself too much in these videos and make them longer than necessary. But I think that'll just about do it for the Rodecaster Pro. That should be a pretty simple setup for you. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. If you're still here, make sure you hit the like button because well, you obviously like the video, otherwise you wouldn't still be here. If you haven't said anything in the comments, leave a random emoji for engagement. And uh, as always, happy streaming. Oh, and subscribe if you're not already. Bye.